Hello, everybody, and Merry Christmas to you all, and welcome to NBC6 Sports Sunday. I am Gavin Moberg, and joining me for this very special holiday edition is my niece, Kyla Moberg. Thanks, Unky. I just want to say Merry Christmas to my grandparents, and I've had a lot of fun with y'all over my break, but I'm not the only one who's had a great Christmas. You are very correct. The Dallas Mavericks today, finally the Mavericks were able to raise their championship banner, giving their fans a long-awaited Christmas present. First, owner Mark Cuban was presented with the Larry O'Brien Trophy once again, then the remaining members of the championship team posed in front of the banner just as it was raised to the rafters. Now you remember, six members of last year's team are no longer in Dallas. But the ones who were there today, like Big Dirk, loved every second of it. As for the actual highlights today, well, the world champion Mavericks and Dirk against the Miami Heat. First quarter, LeBron James gets the outlet pass and well, it looks like mid-season form. Mavs down 32-7 in the first and then check this out. The steal of Dirk and then off to Chris Bosh with the finish in the third quarter. Miami with a huge lead. Dirk turns the ball over on the fast break. LeBron James going to look like he's going to get an alley-oop, but he tips it to D. Wade back in for the dunk. Another look. It's like these guys have been playing together for a long time. Wow. Just a dominating effort by the Miami Heat today as they go on to win 105 to 94. Yeah, we just weren't, weren't sharp and really in, in any category. I mean, that's, uh, you can't win a game like that, especially against a, a hungry, athletic, great team with really great players. So we just weren't sharp enough on, on both ends of the floor. Uh, we didn't look sh good shooting the ball. We didn't look good back, rebounding. Uh, rotations were slow sometimes, so just uh, not good enough to win. Now, Monday's game in, against Missouri, uh, or the Independence Bowl, right? Going up tomorrow. It's Missouri's send-off to the Big 12 Conference. They're entering the SEC next season. and This is Mizzou's third trip here to Shreveport as members of the Big 12. Kind of special for the Eyeball because their ties to the conference run so deep. And even though they have a deal with the Mountain West and the ACC does the Eyeball, it's fitting that a Big 12 team will play their final game as member of that conference here in Shreveport. There's no question about it. This historic. One of the wild cards with a win over the Saints, the Falcons will clinch one of the other spots. Dallas still in the hunt. Chicago eliminated from the wild card spot. Stay with us. We'll, we're back with more after this break. <laughs> this is NBC6 Sports Sunday. Welcome back, everybody. What a great Christmas story the Independence Bowl has tomorrow. 2008 was the last time that LaDamian Washington played at Independence Stadium. Back then, his Green Oaks Giants lost to Fair Park and LSU's Morris Claiborne. I don't care what Na Mother Nature says, the Washington family isn't going to let it rain on their parade. No, they're not. It's been a great week for LaDamian back in his hometown. Wednesday, he was honored by the mayor, and today, he was allowed to spend quite a bit of time with his family, actually, a present that not even Santa Claus could bring down the chimney for his brothers. For the Independence Bowl, we kind of figured, you know, they keep they keep on the losing screen. So it was kind of, you know, mixed feelings, you know, that they come to Shreveport. So just to see him to come home for Christmas in front of his family and friends, you know, it's just a blessing for me and my family just to see him just come out here and just, you know, do what he loved to do, you know, play football in front of a lot of fans. My brothers was basically a... Uh, the whole big reason why I came to Mizzou, they felt that uh, it would be great for me to get away for a little while just to experience other things, get out of Louisiana for a little while. And the whole reason why I came to Mizzou because of the family atmosphere that I felt on my visit. And it has been nothing short of that since I got there on campus. Now that's one of the best parts of Christmas, being able to spend time with family and loved ones. It's a very nice part of the holidays and it's something that LaDamian and his brothers do not take for granted these days. You will understand what my uncle is talking about after watching this story. Here's Eric Bloomberg from KOMU, our NBC affiliate in Columbia, Missouri. Steps up, fires over the middle into the end zone. LaDamian Washington, touchdown Missouri. His background was probably uh, the most incredible I've ever been around. LaDamian Washington is blessed with speed, size, and great hands, but he's also cursed. Where he's come from, that kid, he's got the heart of a lion. 
and that's why we respect him so much. Washington came to Mizzou from Louisiana, far from his family, but closer to his goals. And the ball is taken away by Washington. If I was to give up, I wouldn't be giving up on myself. I'd be giving up on my brothers and my family back home. Yeah, he can be one of the best receivers to come through Missouri. I believe so. He's a 4-3. He runs a 4-3, what, 6-3. <laughs> and just his potential is out the roof. Amazing when you find out his path to get here. Washington's mother is with him, but only as a tattoo on his arm. She died when he was a sophomore in high school, watching her son play. She actually passed away at one of my basketball games, so it's kind of a, yeah, it's a, it's a missed dip. My mom was a single parent. With, it was four, four of us. I got three other brothers back home who I live with now. My mom passed away when I was 15, so, but I mean, she raised me the right way. After her death, LaDamian and his three brothers, two of them older than him, raised each other. She basically molded us to be prepared for when that time did come. Football is what helped him, got him out of this situation that he's in and forced him to grow up faster than he wanted to. But Damien thought of all his brothers when he caught a touchdown against Oklahoma because he knew they'd see it. But Damien Washington to the house, touchdown Missouri. Anytime that my brothers get to watch me play, I mean, it's always good because they actually haven't been up here to catch a game that they haven't been up to visit yet, so I knew that they always watched. So that, I mean, that was a moment special for me. He's got heart, he's got faith, and that, that's really the, all that counts. If you have that, then you can succeed. It doesn't matter, nobody can hold you back. But Damien's also figured out how to eliminate distractions. His focus is different than most. I don't have the dream that like, oh, I want to go to the NFL, I want to do this. I just want to graduate, be the first in my family to graduate with a degree, be able to get a good job, help my brothers out any way that I can. There was actually some talk about, hey, if Michael Orr can have a movie made out of his story, why not let Damian Washington, right? Good story. Now, uh, when we return, Patrick Netherton is going to join us to talk some more bowl games and some demon basketball. We'll be right back. Good job. NBC6 Sports Sunday continues with The Reporter's Notebook. Welcome back. All right, everybody, those who are planning to go to the Independence Bowl and or the Fan Fest tomorrow, listen up. There's been a change of venue for the pregame festivities due to Mother Nature. Instead of the Fan Fest being at Fairgrounds Field, they have moved it to Hirsch Coliseum. It will run from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Now, this event is free. It will feature music by Windstorm, $5 bottomless beer for the adults, along with inflatables for the kids, and of course, cheerleaders and mascots for everybody's enjoyment. All right, Shaka Claus, let's get to this before we head out. This is some fun video here earlier today. The NBA returned today, right? After the big lockout. You know who Shaquille O'Neal is, don't you? You know what Shaka Claus is? It's a mixture between Shaq and Santa Claus, of course. So on the, on the uh, pregame show, there he is, Shaquille O'Neal. Former LSU Tiger coming out, riding some reindeer, and uh, handing out some presents to little kids at all. Shaq, one of the newest NBA analysts, as he uh, is joining the crew and is retired now. So, Big Shaq doing his part to help out the little kids and having a great time. I'm sure he'll be a big deal. Now it was part of the NBA, but of course the Dallas Mavericks, the defending champions, got their banner raised today. A whole slew of the NBA as it kicked off on Christmas Day. All right, everybody. Happy holidays for everybody here at NBC6 Behind the Scenes. I am Gavin Moberg. And I'm Kyla Moberg. Merry Christmas. <laughs> and have a good night, everybody, and a great week. Thanks for watching. It's Shaka Claus! Ho, ho, ho!